Hello and welcome racing enthusiasts to our fifth season of Blinkers Off and what a show we've got coming up and an also a warm welcome to our Adelaide and Melbourne viewers for a first time and joining us on the panel is three time Sydney Premiership winning jockey and Brisbane Premiership winning jockey Larry Cassidy as well we have 4BC presenter Mary Collier racing enthusiast and owner as well our footy big time footy coach and form analyst Blazing Ben Perkins. But first of all, welcome Larry to a fifth season. Thanks Jess, great to be here. And what a season we have coming up. We're going to be previewing the Brisbane Winter Carnival. We also have the Jockey Challenge, the Need for Speed, care of Kingston Park Race Day. One hell of a day out. Mate, it was a great day out there and uh, there's plenty of laughs and entertainment coming up over the course of the three months with this show. And also joining us and a welcome, uh, Mary, welcome. Thanks very much for having me Jess. I feel very privileged sitting next to Racing Royalty and one of the Cassidy brothers. No, it's great to have you on board and uh, I'm sure you'll throw the viewers in a few winners with your uh, expertise uh, for analysts. Well, it's certainly hard enough. This Gold Coast meeting is sort of diabolical for punters every year, so we'll try and find something. I'm sure we will. As well, joining us for a first time is form analyst and big time footy coach, Blazing, Ben Perkins. Welcome, Perko. Yes, good evening. Hello, sports fans. And Ben, I'm sure you can lead uh, a few of the spectators into a few winners. Yes, we're going to tip plenty of winners at the football. And I'm really sorry for the Port supporters this week. I come from Adelaide. I love Port Adelaide. But this week, stick around. Now, we're going to get right into it. We're going to preview, uh, review last week's races with Buffering, Proverb, uh, and one of Tinkler's horses, a Casino Prince in Hooked. And Wayne Wilson also caught up with uh, Tinkler. But first of all, uh, we're going to review uh, Buffering's victory last weekend. Buffering, uh, though he shakes off Listen Son coming to the turn, leads him by a length, ready to rip third to the outside Spirit of Boom. Uh, four away Al Break Temple of Boom and starts me up. Buffering by the 300 metres in the lead. Spirit of Boom went to second, but he's still two lengths away. Ready to rip, struggling. Then Listen Son and Al Break. But Buffering hands and heels by the 100 metres. Well clear, well clear. And he's back in business in a big way. Buffering beats Spirit of Boom. Albrecht, listen, son. And that was a very uh, diabolical performance there by Buffering. And Larry, you've ridden Buffering a few times. You actually rode in the race. You were sitting outside him on Listen, Son. How did, what did you make of the, of the run? Look, um, I think Buffering, it was, it was a very impressive win. But look, he, he beat second-rate sprinters. We've got to be honest with that. But he made them look third-rate. And he did, one, he did run 18.54. So he did run the time. And uh, whatever he did, whatever he did that Saturday, he's certainly going to improve on. You know, I, I took the dollar eighty, so I was very happy. Uh, now we're going to have an, a quick preview of uh, one of Darley's horses here, Proverb. Uh, quite an impressive victory here. Carmora turned to the lane and slipped him at the bend. Move clear. Getting up on the inside, it's on the pocket. Then Fraga Zykin. Here's Proverb to the outside, running on strongly. Mashani Stealth was out deeper. Carmora in front, but Proverb swept upon them. Proverb dashed away. He's all over the winner. And Darley strikes a doom of the Proverb in a canter. Uh, Mary, what did you think of Impressive, Jesse. Like, there's no doubt that he seems a class above what we have to offer here in Queensland at the moment. The run of Larry's horse, Lucky Lucky Lucky, coming from absolutely stone motherless last, was impressive as, as well. But but I have to say, with the exception of maybe one or two horses who were first up in that race from Queensland and that will take improvement, I think we're going to struggle in um, in the three-year-olds, Larry. Yeah, I think so. I've been lucky enough to pick up the ride on Lucky Lucky Lucky, who come from last, and um, I'll ride him in the rough habit plate. He's got a definite chance, but um, the winner's going to be hard to beat in anything he goes around. Now we're just going to preview... Uh a two-year-old by uh, Casino Prince here, hooked uh, one from the Tinkler, Tinkler Yard. Hook given full ball, then came Despot, the others can't win. Uh, Vohard in front, uh, Hook will have the final shot below the 100 metres. Hook coming after Vohard, taking the lead, and the favourite is home. Uh, Hook in the end, a soft win, beat Vohard, Despot third, I'd say. And another Casino Prince, which I know you'd be happy about. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a... Uh... He's doing the job, so I've uh, got a lot of nice ones and we think they'll just keep getting better as they get older, so, uh, you yeah, know, pretty happy. Nathan, the whole racing world is asking the question, where are we at? Oh, look, um, a lot of, lot of people interested uh, in, uh, in buying Patnak Farm and probably a whole lot of people that can uh, be more hands-on than I've been, so um, you know, there's a great team there and a nice bunch of horses, so 
got a lot of people that are interested and um, I think we'll uh, finalise something in the next couple of weeks. Very promising uh, side there in Casino Prince. He looks to be on the move and with all too hard. He's representing great value at the sales. Now we're going to get into it and throw you a few winners and we're going to preview the Gold Coast and the Quaddy. First race we're going to look at is race six. Blazing Ben, what have you come up with? Well, in this race, look, Kelso Wood, mate, he gets the horses ready straight away. When they race, they're ready to go. John Singleton, he owns it. It's called More Strawberries. It's the only horse I'm interested in this race because when Kelso gets them ready to run, they go. Well, it's coming straight from Guy, so you, from Gay, so you could say it's probably got Gay Waterhouse's conditioning on it. Yeah, but Kel Kelso Wood is one of the best trainers in Australia, without doubt. Barrier 15, 60 kilos, you can have it. Mary, what do you like? Look, I'm going to stick with uh, Bound to Blush. First up, terrific record, three from three, first up. Perfectly drawn in barrier two. And most importantly, from a really selfish personal perspective, ran second to <laughs> a horse I part own at Abisi in its last campaign. That was in the Razor Sharp at Warwick Farm. So I'm going to put it on top. Really like the New Zealand horse, Pretty Curie. Don't think you can uh, get away from its form lines over there at Ellerslie. I am going to put uh, the Moody horse, Karuda Queen, the other one that Singo owns in for third. Mm. And uh, probably just because of the, the Snowden and Darley factor, D2 is in for fourth. You know, they are in good form. M myself, uh, I'm sticking with uh, Bound to Blush as well, as Mary mentioned, uh, second behind Aberdeesi. The form line here is very good with this horse. It's run behind Angel of Mercy, Freewheeling, Charmadale, Jester's Girl and Aberdeesi, its last five starts. It's very competitive. It's drawn the two and it's got Tim Clark coming from Hong Kong to ride this horse. It's going to be very competitive and I've got it on top and I think it'll be a great each way bet. For second, I like number uh, nine, Pain in the Glass from the John Thompson stable with Jim Byrne in the stable. As, I've, uh, as you'll see during the show, I've caught up with Paul Hammersley and uh, we talk about local jockeys having local knowledge of the Gold Coast Turf Club. It does pay a little bit and well worth noticing. And for, for third, I got in number seven, Petty Curie. Uh, this horse has come, is coming from New Zealand. Uh, from its last preparation, it's won its last four starts. It'll be very competitive. Drawn the one, 55. How it measures up, we'll soon find out, but no doubt it's going to be there. Larry, uh, just a question. Ellerslie, uh, I don't know much about the track, but if we were to compare it to a Sydney sort of style of track, how would you, what would you rate it? it, it would uh, Ellerslie would compare to uh, either Randwick or Flemington. It's, it's up there with one of those tracks. Like as Larry just mentioned, a great pointer. It's a first class track. Group one horses win there and race there. Uh, it'll be very competitive. Now we're going to get into it. Uh, I caught up during the week with uh, Chief Operating Officer Darren Condon from the Brisbane Racing Club to talk about what's on offer and what the public can look forward to over the Winter Carnival. Joining me on Blinkers Off is our usual suspect, Chief Operating Officer of the Brisbane Racing Club, Darren Condon. Welcome, Darren. Thanks, Jesse. Great to have you on board again. And tell me, How's the carnival shaping up for, for 2013? Look, it's looking to be one of our best carnivals of all time. I think we're going to have the highest rate of visitors from interstate and certainly from New Zealand we've had over the last few years. And, you know, some exciting prospects getting, coming across and hopefully winning some of our races and, and carrying on. Have you got a few of those names on the list that you can punch out that are turning up for the carnival? Look, we're very excited about a horse called Survive, which won the Hawks Bay Cup uh, recently in New Zealand. He's coming for the Derby. Uh, I think he'd be very competitive and looks like a really, really solid racehorse in the making. And as we stand here today, we're really hopeful of getting more joyous. And there's a rumour about it running in both the BDC Cup and the, uh, and the uh, Doombin 10,000, which would be great because probably outside of Black Caviar, she's one of the greatest mares, if not the second best mare in the country. And seeing I'll even argue that maybe she's the best. Now, the carnival, the winter carnival, is the best carnival in, uh, in Australia during the winter. What have the public got to look forward over the, over the coming weeks? Look, the carnival is, it's, it's greatly timed and our weather's so great here in winter, you know, we, we call it winter or autumn and it's uh, certainly not that it compares to interstate, but uh, for the public perspective, you know, we've got Breakfast with the Stars on, on the 4th of June's a great event, there's plenty of events and, and ticketed functions for people to buy on any of the race days and they can get those through brc.com.au and uh, obviously our Oaks Ball this year is one of the exciting parts of the carnival that we've added where people get a chance to socialise and, and rub shoulders with the, with the participants and, and the people who are heavily involved, our sponsors and, and the media around, uh, around the carnival and of course Jessica Mowboy who's probably one of the hottest names in Australian talent today will be performing at our carnival ball and tickets are selling well but there's still plenty available if the public want to buy some. And as well people that are at that Oaks Ball might uh 
get a bit of uh, airtime on the show as well. Well, they may well do, Jesse, and it's, uh, you like the glamour, so there'll be plenty of that. So I'm sure there'll be a number of people get their chance to be seen on, on this great program. Well, Darren, uh, thanks for joining us on the show, and uh, I'm sure the public have got plenty to, to look forward to, and it's going to be a great carnival over 2013. Yeah, we're looking forward, and I'm sure everybody will enjoy it. Thanks very much. No worries. Thanks, Jesse. Great catching up with Darren out at the BRC and they've got plenty to look forward to over the coming months. Now we're going to crack straight into it. We're going to look at the Prime Minister's Cup. Mary, what have you come up with? Look, I really like Marasara here, um, Paul Masara's horse. I, I, I have an affinity with a horse that you've won a little bit of money on on the punt yeah. in past times. <laughs> Very good to me over the Melbourne Spring Carnival. Look, he's really badly drawn, but I hope that uh, Jimmy Cassidy, your brother, can weave some magic and uh, get Marasara home. A roughy into second, happy zero. The Hawks camp are really starting to fire. Michael yep. Carl goes on. You've got to remember that this horse ran third in the Stradbroke. So I think 20 to 1, which is where he's sitting in the market, is pretty good value. Got to believe what you saw with famous Seamus, uh, yep. last start in Brisbane. Very impressive. It pains me to leave out Hot Snitzel, the Gerald Ryan <laughs> trained horse. But, but Gerald's but I, in form himself. Yeah, a very good form. But I, I will stick with Paddy Duff's horse, Steel Zip. Does like the coast and a bit of a sentimental go for the, the multiples there. Larry, you're riding? Yeah, I'm riding Latin News, Jess. Um, horse is going well, but again, uh, drawing a, a horror gate like he did first up and uh, it's going to need a lot of luck. Need a lot of luck. Ben, what are you? Well, rather than get confused, I figure number four, famous Seamus, gets the run of the race from gate three, and why not go with it? Yeah, no, it looks to be in good form, famous Seamus. It'll be very competitive and hard to beat. Uh, it'll be a good bet, but I'm sticking with number two here, Happy Zero, as uh, uh, Mary mentioned, from the Hawks camp. This horse is uh, going to be in form, and I think it loves coming up here to Queensland. Last season on the show, I did tip this horse to win the Stradbroke at 50 to 1. Uh, we had a good few dollars each way and we got uh, a little bit back. So I'm putting it on top. I'm tipping it uh, from an informed stable. Uh, races well up here. Uh, it'll, it'll be a good value at 20 to 1. Uh, number five, feeling ready. I know this horse has only won two starts from 36. But the only, one of the only races that it is won has been at this track and distance. So I'm tipping uh, feeling ready that he's going to be feeling ready and will take out. Be very competitive and run second. Number one, hot snitzel for, for third. And number 13, fire up Fifi. Again, She's got an affinity uh, with Ryan Wiggins, drawn the one. Leading trainer in Heathcote, uh, this filly will be hard to beat. So two, five, one and three for me. Now for our Adelaide viewers, uh, we've got the derby there. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's quite a very tricky derby. Group one, 250,000 to the winner. I like number eight here, McNulty, from the Mick Kent stable. By uh, refused to bend uh, out of our lost horizon, our cup stad mare. This will be very hard to beat. Uh, Mick Kent, he knows how to train a star, and I'm tipping it, McNulty, for the Adelaide Derby. Mary, you, do you like one in the Derby? Look, I have to admit that I haven't been following Adelaide form as closely as I used to, but I am going to stick with some of the interstate raiders. Look, I like the David Hayes uh, trained horse. It ran fourth to It's a Done Deal in the AJC yep. Derby. I know that that's a, a big ask to travel that much, Geronitus, but I've got it on top. Probably from high octane, the biggest danger. I think it looks around about the favourites race. Sure, I'm in there for third. And maybe... Hayes can get a good roughy up at odds in these derby races. We saw that last year in yeah, Melbourne. Did, yeah. um, packing Empire, I've got in for the multiples. Yeah, he's got a few runners in that. Ben, have you, have you looked at the derby at all? Had a quick glance. I've gone for a roughy in gold medals. I just thought it might travel over OK and just be a good 15 to one shot. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, I'm sure you'll find uh, McNulty each way would be quite a good bet. Now, I was back to the track uh, during the week and I caught up with a couple of trainers with runners on the weekend in Trent Edmonds, the stable foreman for his dad, as well as uh, with Kelly Dowdy, who's got in Morning Captain. Here we are at Back to the Track. Joining me is stable foreman of Toby Edmonds Stable, his son Trent. Uh, welcome to the show, Trent. Thanks, Jesse. Nice to be on. Now, you've got a number of runners on Saturday and, and with good chances. Just run us through your runners. Uh, well, Warrens will run in the Prime Minister's Cup, providing he gets a run. Uh, he's been working well. If he gets a run, he should run pretty nicely. Uh, signpost, he's been in good form. He runs in the benchmark 85 1200, uh, looking to sort of maintain a winning record. And um, M Voss, he's sort of looking to get back in the winner's circle, but uh, doing well all the same. And Dolphus in the bracelet, so uh, it should be a good day. You talk about M Voss, he's been a tricky horse to catch. Um, I've, I've done me dough on him a few times. Uh, how's his chances looking uh, on Saturday? You're right, he's tricky, but. Um, 
if he gets everything to suit and has a cushy enough run, you know, he's a nice horse. He ran third in the Burnborough two years ago. So, I mean, the talent's here. It's just a matter of him putting it all together on the day and uh, hopefully Saturday's the day. Well, uh, who would you say would be the best for the day? Best two? Probably I'd have to lean to Signpost and Dolphus. You know, they've both done really well. Signpost has come on really nicely since his last win. And, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a step up in class, but he's done super, so happy with him. Well, there's one for the punters there, eh? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. All right, thanks for joining us, Trent. Cheers, thank you. Now we're going to get into it. Uh, the Hollandale Stakes, over 1,800 metres, 250,000 to the winner. Well worth uh, winning. Larry, you're riding one here. Dan Lee, top weight. Mate, she's got some, she's got some chance of winning it. Yeah, he definitely has from the strong Chris Wallace stable and uh, um, brother Jimmy had been riding him. He's riding probably one of the favourites in the race in, in Fortella. Yeah. Um, and Dan Lee like, ran a good race in the, in the Doncaster and, and then only got beat uh, about 1.8 behind um, Piero. So I think he's got a great chance. Solid form line. Mary, you come up with one? Yeah, look, I think Lights of Heaven's my special of the day on the Gold Coast. I thought she was the best bet uh, when she won the Selwood, the Group 3 in Sydney. I see no reason to jump off. I'm with Dan Lee for second. I thought it was a terrific effort given the weather conditions in the Doncaster. I'm going to throw in Forteller, Jimmy's Mount for third. And uh, a horse I liked as a roughie in the Doncaster, I'm going to back up in the multiples, Light in the Night. Oh, yeah, I don't mind Light in the Night uh, at big odds each way. I'm putting uh, number five on top, Souls and Itzen. Uh, I think this horse... He's a good horse. Uh, there is a query about his uh, fitness, maybe. But I think on his day, he'll beat this lot. Uh, it's, it's a tough race, but I do think uh, he'll be very competitive. And I think uh, Dan Lee, one, one, one point about Dan Lee that's in its favour, it has raced at the track. It's had a one start at the track and it's run third. So it does handle the Gold Coast surface. It's got local uh, jockey, Larry Cassidy, who knows the track, rides it well. So it'd be worth a, a bit of odds, at a, a bit each way, big odds. Ben, what do you come up with? Well, these people you've heard before are absolutely dreaming. There's only two possible chances, and they are number four, Fortella, and number 13, Lights of Heaven. Uh, Dan Lee has no possible chance unless the track goes to slow, and there's only two chances. That's it. Right up. There it is. Straight up from Ben. No messing around. Straight from the hip pocket. Now to a commercial break. that time with our new segment the sporting segment where we talk AFL and NRL but my first part of the story is what a disgrace the umpiring's been in Melbourne especially in the Anzac game where Collingwood were absolutely robbed by the umpires but Blazing Ben our big sports coach what's your best bets over the uh, the weekend for the for the AFL and NRL well as it pains me to say this I'm a Port Adelaide fanatic uh, but I'm telling you the adrenaline that they've been using up the last few weeks it's, it's going to be drained right down low. I think North Melbourne are a super special this weekend. They're only giving away 18 points. I think they'll beat Port by at least seven or eight goals. Uh, so I'm going for right North. There. I think North Melbourne are an absolute living special this weekend. And in the NRL, the best, the pick of the day? Well, the pick of the day, it's, it's probably the Knights to beat the Sharks by more than eight. The Sharks seem to be in a world of drug pain. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the Knights go very well at home. Yeah, no, so, they do. Wayne Bennett on board. That's uh, their go, the Knights at home. Mary, you're, you're, you're a disgrace. You're a Carlton supporter. Yes, indeed. I can't, I can't believe I'm sitting opposite a Collingwood supporter. <laughs> well, you got <laughs> How do we work together? <laughs> How is the next Collingwood coach, co co coaching Carlton? Yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't mention that word, the <laughs> M word. It just doesn't come out of my lips. Not at all. Now, Larry, who do you follow in the NRL? Oh, look, I'd probably have to go with, with the Warriors and, uh, and, and South. Um, Actually used to used to own uh, Ron Coote's house. Oh, yeah, did you? Very famous oh. man. So um, two you? famous people owned own that house. South, South. <laughs> <laughs> did you dig up any tin cans in no, the back? No, there was nothing left in the backyard. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, South Sydney arch enemy number one. I'm a rooster. Now we're going to go to uh, the jockey challenge. It was a great day, and uh, over the next ten weeks, this is a, a challenge well worth tuning in just to watch this. We're going to watch Michael Carl go out at Kingston Park Raceway, where, where it is one hell of a day and a great place to spend a bucks night or a party. Here is Michael Carl in the Jockey Challenge.
So stay with us over the coming uh, 10 shows where we see who is the fastest in the need for speed. Michael driving Miss Daisy Carl, as they referred him to on the day, Larry. It was a great day out there. Oh, fantastic day. And uh, Kingston Park Raceway staff were fantastic. And uh, just the way they organised everything, uh, it's, they put it up to a race style, time trials, and it's just one hell of a day out. Now it's the Gold Coast Guineas, the last leg of the quaddy. We're going to get straight into it. Mary, what's the best bet? Look, I know that Sizzling is Queensland's great hope for the Winter Carnival, and I do wish Lee Matthews and Neville Morgan all the best, but I only have him in for second just because I love this horse, Academus. Beautiful, big, loping horse. think he'll be suited to the Gold Coast track. Just fell across the line when they took him over to Western Australia, but he managed to win. So I've got Academus on top from Sizzling. I'm going to give uh, one of Brian Guy's a little bit of a chance here. I think it's the six in Platinum State. So, uh, But I'll be cheering Academus. It'd be nice if it'd be an Academus, sort of Sizzling dead heat, maybe. <laughs> Larry, you're riding one here from the Mick Price stable, Alan Eve. Looks to be a rough hope at big odds. Yeah, he looks looks to be a lovely horse. He's first up and um, uh, he's drawn nicely in one, so he gets to follow the rail round, which I think is going to be very important for him. I just worry, Larry, about the Melbourne horses at the Gold Coast track. They don't have the best record. No. I know there can be exceptions, but generally speaking, those Melbourne horses haven't been able to break through on the big days. Yeah, look, it is a tricky track, um, Mary, and um, that's why I think Barrier One's really going to help him. Now, Ben. Well, Mary left out uh, Mick Power and David Devine as owners of Sizzling. And look, I've been with Sizzling uh, since day one because they're good friends of mine. They've invited me to every race meeting where Sizzling's run, and I'm I'm loyal to these people. Uh, I'm a big Sizzling <laughs> fan. It's going to sit about seventh or eighth in the run because there's a plenty of pace in the race. Well, being loyal is paying the feed bills. Mate, <laughs> they they own me. They own me. These people. And Chris Munts is going to be super keen to get right back in that winner's circle after he after his little bat with cancer and uh, this horse is going to be set right up for this race it'll sit seventh or rats he's going to pull it out and he's going to go bang right oh myself i uh, i kind of agree i'm going to stick with this i'm going to stay parochial stick with the queensland i'm putting sizzling on top i got him on top from the gerald ryan train dance on stars now gerald he was premiership winning uh, training leading trainer at the gold coast he knows what it takes he brings horses up here to queensland and they always do well in the winter carnival so just keep an eye on that one in the betting could be a sneaky one at big odds number four academius one from the snowden camp they are in form and two saluta from the mclaughlin now on, we're going back to the track where I caught up with Paul Hammersley. Joining me from uh, down at the track this morning's Paul Hammersley. Welcome to the show, Paul. Uh, thank, thanks, Jess. Good to be here. Mate, uh, how are you feeling after the uh, jockey challenge? Oh, no, I went home with my tail between my legs, but um, we'll regroup and we'll try again. Now we're coming up to the big day on uh, Silk Stocking Day and Magic Minions Day. You've got a couple of lovely rides. Just run us through uh, a couple of them. Uh, the one that stands out would be uh, the Conspirator. He got beat two lengths last over horn, better than ready. Um, going to this race second up, he's going to be a good chance. You're riding another horse, uh, Punch On, looks to have a good chance second up. Yeah, mate, uh, she's in the, in the silk stocking. She uh, ran a nice race first up after a nice layoff. She, she has seven months off. Um, she got beat, I think, 3.8 first up. So, you know, come back to her home track where she's won before. Um, get a good draw, she, you know, you expect her to run well. Yeah, just for the local, for the viewers out there uh, tuning in in Melbourne and also around the, around the country. Uh, just for when you're having a bet on this track here, there seems to be a lot of advantage for, for local uh, jockeys and uh, horses. Do you find that? Oh, I think so, yeah. I think the stats would probably show that um, horses and jockeys probably stack up here. Um, it can be, from a riding point of view, it's a, it can be a tricky track to ride. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a dog leg and it can be quite tricky, but um, you know, you've got you to be on the kennel to get there too. So what, just when you say it makes it a bit tricky, what is it about the dog leg that is tricky? Oh, it probably catches some people you know, a bit off guard. They might go a bit soon. Um, some might know about it and not have ridden on the track and might think they'll wait a bit long and, and wait too long. Um, but, you know, it definitely helps going around the track, you know, every couple of weeks for us locals. Well, Paul, uh, good luck uh, on Saturday and, and uh, hopefully you can punch home a winner or two. Great catching up there with local jockey Paul Hammersley. Now, that brings us to an end of Blinkers Off, and I'd just like to say uh, thanks to the panel. They've been great, and uh, I'm sure they've led you into a few winners. And welcome and good night to our Melbourne and Adelaide viewers as well. And join us on Twitter for the chance to win four tickets to the Melbourne races. And join us next week, same place, same time. I'm Jesse McDonald. Thanks for joining us, and bye for now.